So here at electrifying.com, we spend quite a lot of time dispelling myths and debunking old wives' tales about electric cars. Now, some are quite easy to disprove. Um, guess what? I drove my electric car in the rain last week and I didn't get electrocuted, would you believe? Yeah, people do actually think that. Um, but others take a little bit more explanation. Now, there is one criticism that we've read quite a lot on our social media channel, and that is selling a used electric car is almost impossible because, I quote, nobody will want to buy a car with a second-hand battery. So, in an effort to disprove this particular myth, I would like to introduce you to the car that was officially the fastest selling and most in-demand used vehicle in the UK last year. Welcome to the Renault Zoe. Yes, you heard that right. The 2015 version of our favorite French fancy topped Auto Trader's list of cars that spent the shortest amount of time on the nation's forecourts. If no one wants to buy a used electric car, someone forgot to tell the British public. The Zoe was launched in the UK in 2013 and is still one of the most popular electric cars in Europe. The first cars were fitted with a 22 kilowatt hour battery, which returned a range of between 60 and 90 miles and was known as the ZE20. In 2015, Renault introduced a new version with the same battery but an upgraded motor that extended the range to around 120 miles. All good news, you might think. But there's a catch, of course, there's always a catch. So the later model with the longer range can't be rapid charged, so make sure you know what you're getting. Confusingly, Renault sold both cars at the same time with the same name. Thanks, Renault. So if you do want to know how to spot the difference, then the original has the model code Q210, while the later model is known as the R240, not R2D2. That's someone else. Now, for some strange reason, Renault kept this confusing setup when it updated the Zoe range in 2017. In came a much bigger 40 kilowatt hour battery, but the confusing two motor option remained. So if you wanted a long range, you had to choose the car that couldn't be rapid charged. And if you wanted a rapid charge, you had to choose the car that had the smaller range. Hmm, clear as mud, right? Thankfully, charging the Zoe is a pretty simple affair. Apart from the current model, all Zoes have this nice and simple socket at the front of the car. Now, the electric car buffs will tell you that this is called a Type 2 plug socket. On most electric cars, the Type 2 uh, is known as the slow charger, but on the Zoe, it has this rather clever party trick. Can actually charge up to 43 kilowatts if it's fitted with rapid charge capabilities. Now, this sounds like great news, but there is a bit of a downside. Because these early Zoes are now the only cars around that can rapid charge through a Type 2 cable, a lot of the newer charging units aren't actually being fitted with them. So if you rock up to an Instavolt or a Polar 150 kilowatt unit, you're gonna be out of luck, unfortunately. Using a standard 7 kilowatt home charger, the 22 kilowatt hour Zoe will take around three hours to fully charge while the 40 kilowatt hour model will take around four and a half hours. For rapid charge models, the 22 kilowatt hour will take 30 minutes to get an 80% charge, while the 40 kilowatt hours will take just under an hour to reach the same level. Now the size of the Zoe is kind of very similar to your regular super mini. The battery is stored under the floor, which means you are left with a grand total of 338 litres of boot space, which is pretty decent, and plenty of room for five people inside. Driving the Zoe really is as easy as it gets, and I can completely see why it's developed such a devoted following over the years. First of all, you've got this amazing big windscreen with great visibility, then the controls are nice and clear, they're in sensible places, and you know, I think everything just works as it should do. I think if this is your first electric car, then you'd be able to get going straight away. It's nice and easy, we love it. However, it's maybe not the quickest thing on the road. Naught to 60 takes around 13 seconds, but it actually feels a lot more lively than the figures suggest. So let's give it credit for that. Perfect for urban driving. 
you also get a lot of kit with the Zoe, which is a real bonus. Dynamique models were the biggest seller in the UK, and they came with alloy wheels, air conditioning, hill start assist, Bluetooth, and a load of other goodies. You also get remote charging via an app and cabin preconditioning, so you can get your car nice and toasty inside before you get in it. That's great in winter and means you can throw away the de-icer as well as making the best use of the battery power for moving rather than heating the car. When it comes to buying a used Renault Zoe, there are two very, very important words to be aware of. Battery lease. When Renault launched the Zoe in 2013, customers could buy the car, but not the battery. You had to lease that under a separate agreement with Renault. Now, that might sound like a bit of an odd arrangement now in 2020, but bear in mind back then, batteries cost a fortune and actually nobody knew how long they were gonna last. So by offering the battery as the lease, it was actually quite clever because then Renault kept the price of the car down, but also gave customers the confidence that they could go electric by guaranteeing the battery. However, where this grand plan starts to unravel is on the used market. And that's because until very recently, the batteries could never be paid off and actually had to be transferred to the new owner who then had to carry on the payments. So while you could pay cold hard cash for your Zoe, the battery was owned by Renault, who could charge you anything from 50 to 110 pounds a month just to have it in your car. Thankfully, there are two solutions if the idea of a battery lease doesn't appeal to you. The first is to find a Zoe I model. These are quite rare, but the letter I tells you that the car doesn't have a battery lease. Renault started selling I models in 2015 and they cost £5,000 more at the time. The other option, which has only just been made possible, is to buy the battery pack from Renault. You do this in exactly the same way you would, say, pay off a loan and you can ask a dealer to do this or you can actually sort it out yourself once you've bought the car. If you decide to go down the DIY route, you will need to agree a settlement figure with Renault. The cost of the battery will depend on its age and the mileage of the car. Every car will be different, but if you have an early model, the buyout figure should be around £2,500, while a late model with a low mileage will be around the 6000 mark. As for reliability, the Zoe has proved itself to be a pretty robust little thing. For all models registered up to the end of 2018, the warranty was four years on a car and five years on the EV powertrain. Now the battery is covered for eight years or 100,000 miles. And if you decide to continue with the battery lease, Renault will replace the battery free of charge if its capacity drops below 75%. So what's it going to cost you to have this Renault Zoe on your driveway? Well, the early 22 kilowatt hour cars start from just under £6,000 for a battery lease model, which is amazing. Now, if you have the battery owned iModel, they're available for around 7,500. Then if you have the bigger battery, the 40 kilowatt hours, that starts from around 11,500 pounds with a battery lease. And then you've got to pay 14,500 pounds for the battery owned model, got that? Basically, all round, it's a great value car. Whichever model you choose, you're gonna be onto a winner with the Zoe. It's fun to drive, it's really easy to live with. So I think if you're looking to make your first step into the world of EVs, then I think this is a great place to start. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out our other used electric car reviews and videos at electrifying.com.